Mae mor ciol y gwyngyn eich le ciol torri chwlyn, dôn yn lunni, co chwlyn a siwr eich pedr o rydau. Ciol sian o rydau. classical you mean European classical there is not a European classical tr music tradition in this country there is on the other hand a highly developed traditional music which because it's orally transmitted must not be considered essentially as folk music uh, for example in the Orient you have music which is orally transmitted but is still highly developed yeah. you have the court music of Japan for example and the Korean novices music that kind of thing uh, here we also have uh, highly developed traditional music, very complex, very sophisticated, but it's more oriental than western. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Kiran Makmahuna. Around the heron, I was a green yoshla, Kade Miller for the road. I was for the road shirt on so the cure law is now shunta. I was for the dano riven the dini at our fear hunting. I was a guest at Ling, a radio telefish heron. Uh, you're all very welcome to this night of excitement and of good, lively music with a little sadness thrown in. Anish, ta shanach lán a derm is omi ilán er arga wór an kiol. There are many islands in the great sea of music, islands of different character and of different beauty. Sean O'Reilly cultivated many of those musical islands and produced a rich, a very rich harvest of music. This evening is devoted to the traditional Irish music associated with Sean O'Reilly. And I thought we might start by remembering the informal sessions of music that I certainly remember in Sean O'Reilly's house in Galloping Green in County Dublin way back. Uh, he was the host for many a session there and his good and gracious wife and a very patient wife at times when we all invaded their house. Out of those sessions emerged a group, which a group that set us all on fire in the 1960s. And tonight we are, want to reconstitute that group. And uh, some of the players are gone, but we have some additional musicians. John O'Reilly led this group and gave it a name. He called it after the great Gaelic territory out there on the Bray Road where he lived, uh, South Dublin and into uh, Wicklow, and so was formed Curtori Coolum.
Kultori Kualan, and I'd just like to give you the names. Of course, sadly, uh, the great founder is not here, Sean O'Reilly, but I have a feeling that he's around here somewhere chuckling to himself, and uh, Sonny Brogan is gone. But tonight, Kultori Kualan on the harpsichord, Padre O'Reilly. And on the accordion, Eamon the Butler. Come on. Come on, let's go. On Shanador, Eamon the Butler. On the Bowron, Pather Mercier. And next to him, a Clare man, Michael Tubridy. <laughs> Sean Potts is certainly a Dublin. <laughs> and Peabody, Piper, Liam O'Flynn, I would say. Liam, I would say, is a man of the world. And then one of the great founding, one of the great founding fathers of Kilturi, Gwolan, John Kelly. <laughs> two brothers, two fiddle players of a very musical family, Paddy and Seamus Glacken. And finally, a very old friend and one of the old Kyoturi Kualan, who has been away from this country for many years, but we're delighted to welcome back with his old bones, Ronnie McShane. <laughs>
in a carta on dinner, a gushin marahainach, a kelter riholane, a gusus minik, a hainamare, a fod natida, corn fever, and jasagus corn fever, and nyah maha. Shanarida's musical arrangements were often quite complex, but at other times they were quite simple. And I'm going to give you an example of one fairly simple arrangement that he had to a reel. And uh, you'll forgive me if I ask you to imagine that I'm Sean O'Reilly at a rehearsal in upstairs Henry Street where Radio Aaron was at the time, a pokey little room. And we're just sitting around, uh, no particular order on the musicians, uh, we're chatting away and joking and uh, Sean is throwing around some variations and some particular orders that he might use for next week's Flach Yolen Radio or Rakadok and Riedig. So it might go something like this. Uh, Michael, what was that uh, tune that you were playing there a while ago? That was a reel called uh, Castle Kelly. Would you play just a few bars of it? That's it. That's fine. Um, Liam, would you play just the, the second part? I think it's a, a two-part reel, isn't it? It's an ABB. ABB, which means the first part once and the second part twice. Uh, the ABB very often confuses people, but we use the A for the first part and the B for the second. So, uh, Liam, if you'd play the second part of the B slowly, very slowly, not like a reel, just a very slow tune. Okay? I'm sorry, uh, when you come to the end of it, uh, it will just pause, I count for Ronnie, if you come in at that stage, and we'll take it with, um, we'll start off with, with Castle Kelly going very slowly, the pause, and then the whole band twice, then uh, box and fiddle, this is the box incidentally, uh, oh, two no, whistles, <laughs> <laughs> two whistles and flute, and whole band uh, twice, okay? So you go ahead, the slow part first.
Nagur, bin Kaslan, Kaslan i Chali. And ish, ma, vi rudder wine a ring in Riedach, a girl to Riholem, Hushe on Fiabilum, Contossa. Agus Marjaler Gahushe, Contossa, a girl to Riholeni, Jan Gilor, Grupiella, a Fudnatira, and Ja Hompla. Agus O Hinele, ta a Wadni Snow Mass, Erebi. Shortly before Sean O'Reilly went into hospital, he spoke to me and to Len Clifford about expanding his group, making it bigger and better. He talked about various musicians that he might take into the group. And among those musicians was a very fine piper. Now, I must say that we had in our collection of music hundreds of dance tunes, reels, jigs, hornpipes. But we also had about 50 songs that we could play without even once looking at music. Anyway, some of us couldn't read music. But however, we had these songs and we could just play them straight off. One of those songs was Ka Kemania, The Battle of Kemania, written by Moida Weenie later. And that was one of the tunes that we played with Sean. And when I spoke earlier on about the band being expanded, one of the pipers that Sean talked about and for whom he had great regard, and I think he is a, a fantastic piper, and he is now going to play that tune for you, Ka Kemenia, a hard Liam Og, no Liam O'Flynn, Agus Ka Kemenia.
the Palatines were persecuted in uh, Germany and a group of them came to Ireland in 1712 and settled in Limerick and they brought new farming methods with them uh, methods that the locals hadn't seen before and the people of West Limerick saw for the first time lettuce growing in the local fields and they insisted on referring to it as German cabbage <laughs> but uh, there was a young girl in this group about which this song is written Agus Ahardigler ta Anaurani in Shahagan Agus la bra even bar a big smick while three ball on teeth. Right tie all the deedle tie, right ball the deedle, right tie all the deedle, air I o. Ke cosby in sun tli o rum, aquinin on file it teenic. Right tie all the deedle tie, right ball the deedle, right. I all the deedle air I o this rig sheep is mine nemme no one pile on a me and to no one duck the pain a pile lumps shall be deem of winter shed word for buckle grant for me a calling The deedle tie right, fall the deedle right, tie all the deedle air I o. The red of peace and a hack of shoe, the stuff of a sneak, couple of poor Right, tie all the deedle tie right, fall the deedle right, tie all the deedle air I o. My hem ship in a bile at the fine, me hold a pose. Right, tie all the deedle tie right, fall the deedle right, tie all the deedle air I o. The door to in a big cock, a lot of tarl on my smeal of fire Your good left hand, my head mess, and fuck a loam of water in Your good stock is tall of lum, my smile, and he's got sauce the Right tie, all the needle tie, right ball, the needle right tie, all the needle air I o My craig and co and pasper and the yoke and the coast Right tie, all the needle tie, right ball, the needle right tie, all the needle air I o Morning in the winter road Falatinig, <laughs> a Ed. Tony McMahon, in my estimation, is probably one of the most imaginative 
box players or accordion players, I should say, uh, in Ireland. He is uh, a very good reel player and jig player, but also he has a great feeling for the slow airs, which is a very difficult uh, instrument to use when you are playing a slow air. So Tony will now tell you a little bit about the tune that he is going to play himself. Tony McMahon. Thank you. Well, my little contribution tonight is a slow air called Parth Nabuke, which you could translate as the music of the ghosts. And it's a strange, haunting tune which comes from the Blasket Islands. And on this historic occasion, it brings Sean back very much here into my heart. And it also brings back, even for an instant, the many, many traditional musicians and singers who have left us since those heady days of music, wine and roses in the early 70s. So here's Port Naboke.
A Kerry version of an Ulster tune sung by a Corkman. Shana Shainshin, a Kana Viban Usul, no Margletra Freshner, Carrick Fergus. Did you ever try and play a Kerry slide? I mean, in the right time. I think that only Kerry people can really play a Kerry slide as a Kerry slide should be played. 
And uh, we have two very good players here now to play you some Kerry slides and also to follow that with a few reels. We have Julia and Billy Clifford.
Magov, Julia Agus Billy Clifford and Shin. Han na Haurain Anwar le Shano Rieda. Aurain as an oil to Taka Hide. Nish ni Aurain as Kuigamun a wine. Ach Aurain as Konamara. Agus via far wine, Lake Yolturi Holland, a Hanach and Vinikling, a Hla Radio, Agus and Archiella. Agus uh, Iskaranish of Eshenjolin. The songs of the Gaeltacht were very often sung on radio, especially on Rakarot and Riedig, by a Connemara singer who has a great store of songs and who is now going to sing for you Liamog O'Reilly, Agshent Hauran, Ena Darach O'Kahain. Milmagi, <laughs> Taurani on Taurani Brashin as Konamara Darach O'Kain. The Anvas Egerida er Hyol Naglar Shodi. Sean O'Rieda regarded the music of the Harpers as being very important. He called it Kyol Nanuasal, the music of the nobles. 
the Harpers played a very important part in bridging the gap, as it were. The 18th century Harper, Thorlough Caroline, established a musical culture between the Protestant ascendancy and the depressed Catholics, which or whom indeed seemed to have little else in common at the time. And the development of the musical culture of Ireland seemed to have this huge gap that worried uh, Sean O'Reilly, and he thought that he might be able to use the music of the Harpers, especially that of O'Carolan, uh, in bridging this gap. Now, the next tune we're going to play for you is by O'Carolan. Pise na hulbeja ho gwelach agus ta kujela den kiol o homo Caroline ta blas na horper agus pise andias kiole agnam gema. Uh, the piece was composed for uh, Colonel John Irwin from uh, Dromard in County Sligo. Uh, there are Irish words to it. Praising the Colonel for his bravery in battle. Uh, thanks to Irwin. <laughs>
the playboy of the Western world, Agus and Pisa Kjoil, a ta Lishin Skanan, she no countess na Pisa Kjoil, a ta Lishin Skanan, she na Mawurnin Baan.
Mary Bergen, Block Theachatana Coney, Suspicia. Now, we can't let Kyoltori Coolan go, and they'll be going in a moment, without one great song in which many of us, even people like me who can't sing, have joined in uh, over the years. So, their last contribution, Sean O'Shea, Kyoltori Coolan, Agusan Pucker Bulle. Arthur being on Schultach, Schkeltach, Agusan Schkeltach, Bohanach, which roughly means, I think, the person who can tell a yarn gets around. <laughs> and Sean O'Reilly himself was a good man to spin a tale, and he met the Shanacha, he met all the great storytellers. We have, of course, here the greatest storyteller of them all tonight, and Shanachi Ehain Eamon Kelly. It's me, Hamma. Come on, Ligan Lathos. We ask you no has the English. Well, in Caper Tagum, son of is Tasha Bunne, Erskelin, a hula, or Yano Rudahin. I guess Mas Boom, Mokine, Durchelum, Gorono Vahirhain, Kulishenskil. Sean or Reader's story. Right. 
There was this young man <coughs> and he went to his uh, sweetheart's father to ask for the daughter's hand in marriage. And the father, a decent man, he put his hand that way into the chiffonier and he took out a bottle of ten-year-old and two glasses noisy. Isn't that lovely sound? <laughs> <coughs> And he was pouring out a glass for him when the young man, you know, wanting to make the right impression said, Oh no, he said, I don't drink small play cards, go with women, betting horses or taking active interest in politics. <laughs> and the father putting down the bottle, he says, tell me, he said, um, do you eat grass? No, says the young man. Well, in that case, says the father, you're not fit company for man or beast. <laughs> <clears throat> there was this man, Mossy Mali, and he was going to the pig market to the 6th of November. Mossy, he'd always fatten two pigs coming up to the fall of the year. And one of them would be sold, and the other pig would be killed and salted and put in the tub. And then in three weeks' time, when the pickle would rise in the tub, the flitches of bacon would be taken out and they'd be hung dripping from the rafter, smoking away. And then Mossy, if he had spuds in the pit and if he had swades in the shed and a couple of white heads of York growing in the haggard, himself or the missus, they wouldn't see any hunger for the winter and more power to them. <laughs> Mossy was going out the yard <coughs> with the horse to the 6th of November and the wife, she came to the door with a bottle of holy water for to shake it in the horse, so you see, the horse, a young mare, she was very flighty. And the horse, not expecting it, when the splash of holy water fell in the horse's back, well, she made one bounce and nearly catapulted Mossy and the pig out of the whale. <laughs> Mossy was praying for the wife under his breath. <laughs> well, he controlled the horse and as he was going out the gap, the wife called after him. She said, don't come home to me, she said, without a white enamel bucket. I want it for going to the well. For at that time in country places, there was nothing on tap, only porter. <laughs> the thing that Mossy liked better than water. <laughs> and he didn't drink a fright, it broke Lord Bantry, when it was only top on the point. <laughs> so he got away to the market, and at that time in the market, it was uh, the custom that you had to take the animal out and put it on her four legs in the ground. And then the buyers did come in, and Mossy did this, and there were other pigs there from other parts of the country, and then they were joined by the pigs from the town. At that time, any man worth his salt would fatten a couple of pigs in the back streets or in the laneways. And it was the Danes that introduced that caper, because the Danes were the first people to live in towns in Ireland. And the Danes, your Dane, he keep a cat to kill the mice and a dog to kill the rats. And then to eat the scraps that had fall from the table. And then he keep a pig to eat what the cat and the dog wouldn't eat. <laughs> and keep the place around the place clean. You see, there, there was no refuse collection at the time. <clears throat> <laughs> well, <clears throat> when all these country cousins met the town cousins, there was such squealing and grunting, there was more noise than was ever heard since the start of creation. And then when the train came in, the jobbers had come bursting in the market gate. The Barneys from Bantry and the Barretts from Tralee. And they used to have pea caps that time and white trench coats and uh, brown polished gaiters. And they'd walk around the animal making the bargain and they'd be walking away from the owner and walking back again and walking away. And they'd be cursing and swearing and they'd be walking around the pig and slapping the pig in the rump. And then finally they went up by slapping the owner on the hand and making the bargain. And the docket had be written out and the price had be put on it and the owner could bring that to a certain public house in an hour's time where he'd be paid. And indeed some of the profit, that's where it used to stay in the public house. <laughs> so Mossy, when he collected a few pounds after selling the pig and gave back the look penny, he had a few drinks like everyone else and then he thought about going home and he ripped the horse that was tied to the courthouse railings and he sat into the car and he was making for home when all of a sudden he thought about the wife and the white enamel bucket. So he pulled the horse down <coughs> in front of a hardware shop to the new owner that was there at the time. 
a foreigner in the town and not very well liked. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no lamp post outside the shop to tie the horse. It's just such a flighty little animal. But he said he was only going in for a white enamel bucket and that he had chance letting her stand there by the curb. So he ran in, picked up a white enamel bucket and brought it over to the counter. And there was a crowd of people there and he couldn't pay for it. So he was running over to the window to see was the horse all right. And running back again to the counter to pay for the bucket and over again to the window to see was the horse all right. And one time he looked out, something frightened the little mare and she took head and she went off up High Street like the she agree. And Marcy ran out and when he was going through the door, the owner of the shop put his hand that way on his shoulder and took the bucket off him and said, this thing is going too far and called the policeman that was over across the street. The policeman came and took out his book. Oh, well, he didn't stop the runaway horse. <laughs> <clears throat> And it didn't matter what Mossy said by way of explanation, that he was only running out to catch the horse. The policeman didn't pay any attention to him. All ears the policeman had for the owner of the shop, for at that time, the same as now, money spoke and told the truth. <laughs> so poor Mossy, poor Mossy, he got his whereas, his billy do, he got the summons, and he was up before the court the following Tuesday. And the judge, looking at him, he was the picture of, of, of innocence in the box. But the weight of evidence was against him. The peeler and the, and the, the shopkeeper. So that he was fined. It was only a small thing. It was only a bucket. But the damage was done for the following Saturday. There it was in the paper. Big headlines. There'd be a couple of pages of court cases in the paper that time every week. Big headlines. Glown, Grish, Gein, man. Charged with stealing bucket. And his name there in big print. If he won the sweep, they wouldn't have made as much history out of it. <laughs> and the following Sunday, going down to Mass the following day, his name was on everyone's lips. And his wife and the wife's sister, that was home on a trip from Holyoke, they were mortified. For at that time, oh, it was a terrible thing to be called a thief. And no one on their side of the family was ever called that. And so as not to have any more misfortune come on the family, the wife decided from there out to confine Mossy to barracks. He wasn't allowed to go outside the four ditches of his own little farm. And the town was out of bounds. That was the 6th of November. And all during November, he was like a bag of weasels, you know. His tongue was stuck to the roof of his mouth for the want of a wet. And then in December, he implored to the wife to let him go into town even, you know, let him go for for a half an hour, even for... So, just coming up, Christmas Saturday, it being the season of goodwill, she allowed him to go off to town, and she told him to be home early. <clears throat> he went off, and he was home late, and she was down to the gate to meet him, and she said, what kept you? And he said, the chapel was full. He said, I was delayed going to confession. <laughs> oh, then she said, and it was time for you to go to confession. Did you tell the priest about the bucket? You're right, did not, he said, don't you know, well, you saw that in the paper. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Eamon Kelly. And as he always said after old stories, Mata Bregon Bich. Now, Sean O'Reilly had a great respect for the traditions, the heritage of music in this country. But he wasn't afraid to experiment with new forms of that music or new arrangements. And he introduced into Irish music traditional instruments which had not normally been associated with the traditional music. And he did this transformation and arrangement without compromising the true nature and the traditional character of the music itself. Now, other people have done that in the last 15 years. And one of the great people is the man we're going to hear now with his new band. Donald Lunny has done marvelous work.
He has done marvellous work in making Irish music suitable for films and drama productions, and now his new Donald Lunny and his new band.
Thank you very much. Thank you. There, there were two jigs, an old one and a new one. And uh, the, the old one was called the Gold Ring. The new one, so new, hasn't got a name yet. But uh, anyway, uh, to tell you who's on the stage here, Comic Brannock's playing flute, Sean Oag Potts playing pipes, Damien Quinn and Baron, Steve White on congas and percussion, Artie McGlynn on guitar, Nully Casey on fiddle, Manus Lunny on bazooki. There you go. Three reels coming up this time, three old reels. First one made well known by the playing of Tommy Peoples, and uh, that's followed by the Major Mullock, and then Major Harrison's Fedora. There you go. Thank you very much. We're going to do an air this time, which uh, are dedicated to uh, a grand man who will be remembered with great affection. His name is Declan McNeilis. 
and the air is called Declan.
Thank you very much. That was the slow reel. And the next one's the slip jig. Okay, so. Thank you. We're going to leave you with two more tunes. I'd just like to say it was a pleasure and an honour to be here. We'll uh, 
finish up with uh, a pair of polkas. An old polka I learnt a good few years ago over the telephone from Dennis Doody. <laughs> True. <laughs> and uh, a new polka called the Tolka Polka. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. When Sean O'Reilly decided to improve his Irish because he felt it had gone stale, he didn't take half measures. He took himself off, first of all, to the Guelph of, of Kerry, the Corcogaina, Dun Queen, Bonner Terry. Later, when he moved to Cork to lecture in the music department of University College Cork, he made a total commitment. He moved himself and his family to the Gaeltacht of West Cork, 
Kushe Stak, Kun Konaha, Igule, Ingwelta Puskri. There he uh, identified completely with the traditions of music and song and story, and he gathered round him the traditional singers of the area, young and old. And out of that activity came Hor Kule, Shkriefshe, Kjoldov, Dun Afrin, Ata Anish, Mar Afrin, Gwelge, Thrid Anoshun or Fad, Nismona Afrin Awan, Agus Ta Anasarum, Gwil Ansha, Ling Anacht, Winter Kule, Agus Kurimos for Gor Marshin, Kor Kule. Oh, 
great to be with you tonight and I must tell you that it's a very special night for me personally. Um, there has been many a thought cast on this evening because I have to face certain things and it was a privilege to be in your company to go through that stage. But a bigger privilege was to be with my own people and in recognition of that we have a little secret we want to share with you. We have amongst us and that's O'Sullivan. And uh, later on you'll see a little thing that is handed down from generation to generation in their family. And Barabwanach, Maradarach Gomna Chanoin. And it comes from O'Sullivan Bear. He used it to call his people together. You will hear tonight, it has been handed down from generation to generation, and it has been said that the last time it was blown was at Kachemania. So we will play it again tonight. But first, this is the second last song of the night, and you're not going to get away without singing. I can assure you of that. So we want you all to sing together with us. Skullvarding. I play the chorus first, and you can sing it with us. It goes very simple. The words are very simple. Rang the doodle little dum, tithery idle little dum. Rang the doodle little dum, tithery We try it together. Lekele the Rang the doodle I couldn't hear you behind the Cork Examiner. Could you try a little bit louder? Rang the doodle little dum, the Rang the doodle little dum,
Clown cannot then crest and lead Let us be their clown by play be free Let us be their clown by We're going to finish with a great song. We're going to finish with a I'd uh, also like to thank the Noel Pearson Productions for making this available and the sponsors for this marvellous, not just tonight, but marvellous weekend. Sponsors, of course, were the 
national city brokers. I would also like to remember with affection all the work over the years that Gael Lynn has done to promote the sort of music that we are hearing here tonight. Ha. Nish, and how on show, Ashe, all in Nish, three and Kira Fad, Mariola, Winter Kune, been shames in shape, I was been shay in Artahi Awados in shape. I was ta, Kurfa, Dalish, a ta rollers a giver fad. I was Kuramid Dere, Leshaniha, all in show, I was an eha star old show, let all on. A one Lashan, Clot of McDonald's, and Octavish Dirk Gillamar. Oh, so let 